Good morning, or depending on when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name's Ross, and as always told, out of voice of radio. So today, we need to take a little bit of a look at a new stadium card that looks like it could be really, really impactful. And a new scolopede, which looks pretty gosh darn nice as well. Now, the stadium card, I should say our translations come from the lovely Antoine Boulay, but you probably knew that by now. The stadium card is Dynatree Hill. And we kind of knew this was coming. I showed you that tease there a few days ago. And I told you that it was Dynatree Hill. And I also told you that I didn't get that the lovely Joe from Cerebi.net did. But we can see here... It's the same card. And Dynatree Hill looks good. It's a very straightforward stadium card that reads, Pokemon in play, yours and your opponents can't be healed. No healing for you. And this could be huge. But it really depends on where we are. I mean, at the moment, in my Excadrill deck, I have started playing the Mimikyu that stops bench Pokemon being healed. And the reason I'm playing that is extremely simple. It's because the Zashian V decks, a lot of them, the metal-y kind, tend to play Mallow and Lana. And Mallow and Lana completely screws up the maths and makes me lose the game. So I've lost. So what I generally tend to do here is I will play a Mimikyu. And then if my opponent uses Mallow and Lana, it just fails. And they don't get to heal. And then I... Well, I win a lot more. That that game used to be kind of 50-50. It's now kind of 60-40, 70-30 most of the time when I play it out. But that only stops bench Pokemon being healed. Now, in that particular matchup, it's fine. Because it's Mallow and Lana I'm trying to stop. And if I can stop their Mallow and Lana, I usually win the game. But it doesn't help me against Mewtwo and Mew. You see, Mewtwo and Mew has an attack. And most people forget about the attack most of the time because it's only one attack and it's a GX attack. Mewtwo and Mew is generally played so that they can use Perfection to copy attacks of EXs and GXs in the discard pile or in play. But it does have Miraculous Duo GX, a GX attack that does 200 damage. And if you've got extra energy on, you heal all damage from all of your Pokemon. This is huge. And a lot of the time when you use Miraculous Duo, you win the game. Because you play it in such a way as it gets rid of a lot of attacks, your opponent hasn't been getting one hit KOs, etc. And a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time, that is enough to win you the game. Which is kind of awesome, right? Well, this would stop it. And then, of course, we've got that new Cheryl card that came out in, or is coming out in Battle Styles, depending how you look at it. That heals all of your evolved Pokemon. And then it got healed you have to discard the energy from. And of course Mimikyu will block that on the bench. And Mimikyu was in Darkness Ablaze. So it will survive the next rotation. Although to be fair we expect Battle Styles to last one more. We expect there to be a format starting in 2022. Which is actually Battle Styles on. And at that stage yeah fine. Mimikyu will go away and this will still be here. But my point is... That Cheryl a lot of the time will be turned off by Mimikyu, but the active will still heal. Now, my point is, this is way better than something like Mimikyu. And because of Mew to a Mew, because of Mallow and Lana, because of Cheryl, healing could actually be really good. And we never know what's going to be released in the future. Maybe in the future we get something like Max Potion. Remember Bronzong in the new set in Battle Styles does have one of those abilities that lets you move energy around. So something like Cheryl and Max Potion work beautifully with that. And then this Dynatree Heal will become so much better. Or maybe not. We really don't know what's coming around in the future. But this is the kind of card which is here because blocking healing... The only way this isn't good is if we don't have good enough healing cards. Now, of course, it is a stadium, which means your opponent can just play their own stadium. And if they do, they do. At the moment, we've got that Mars Shadow that lets you discard it from the bench while then getting rid of one of your opponent's stadiums, or your opponent's stadium, any stadium in play, to be fair, whether you played it or your opponent. Resetting hole. But... That is an unbroken bond, so that is going to rotate out a few months after this set comes out. But we've got ways to get rid of stadiums, not least 
just playing a new stadium over it. And that's the big risk with a card like Dynatree Hill. You play it down and you go, ha, 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 your opponent wants to use Cheryl, but they can't use Cheryl in their face. But they just play their own stadium and then play Cheryl. And it's all wasted. But then again, you're forcing players playing Cheryl to play a counter stadium. And if they don't have it at the right time, it's not going to do anything anyway. So I'm going to give this between four and five wussies. I think there is a huge amount of potential here. I think this could be an absolutely crucial card that completely shuts down some good decks. But if we don't see a lot of play from stuff like Cheryl, then maybe it's not going to end up being good enough in the future. This seems like the kind of stadium that we need in the game because it really could make an impact and help some decks and completely shut decks down. But you know what? Some decks are good and we need to counter them. Now, we've also got a new Scolopede that we need to have a little bit of a look at here. And this one kind of interests me. It's a little bit awkward, but there's, there's some good stuff to be had. So what we've got here is 160 HP, which is about standard for a stage two. It was high when Sun and Moon base came out. We're a way away from that now. We've got a retreat cost of three, which is kind of annoying if I'm honest with you. We've got a weakness to fighting, and there's a lot of stuff weak to fighting at the moment. But crucially, this has 160 HP and a weakness to fighting, just like the Dene. So essentially anything that can KO the Dene can KO this. You're a Darkness Pokemon, that means weakness on Oricorio, which could actually be genuinely relevant. And maybe stuff like Dragapult, if Dragapult makes a comeback. Maybe it will. And it means you can use, at least briefly before rotation, you can use things along the lines of Black Market Prism Star, so you don't actually give up a prize if you've got Darkness Energy attached. But what does it do? Well, the first attack is not terribly exciting. One Darkness Energy, 50 damage plus Poison. Give this attack to me on a basic Pokemon and I'm like, yeah! Give this attack to me on a stage two Pokemon and I'm like, why? Because I've already got my stage two out. I've evolved up. It's been minimum one turn, maybe longer. And I know it's a single energy attack, and I like single energy attacks like you like single energy attacks, but come on, ladies and gentlemen. Really? Nah. It's not enough. I've invested too much into this to only do 50 damage plus poison. And I know we can play around with poison, and I don't even care. It's not enough. I need more. Okay, fine, I'll remind you that Toxtricity puts an extra two damage counters on for poison between turns, and it does stack so you can put multiple Toxtricity down. Wait, Toxicroak, it's Toxicroak. And then it will keep adding up, but no. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. The reason we're playing Scolipede is for the second attack. One Darkness, two Colorless, 100 damage, meh. Though it will get that Oricorio, so like I say, not terrible. But if your opponent's active Pokemon is poisoned... You do 120 more damage. This destroys Pokemon V. Like 120 plus 100 is 220. 220 is the magic number for the vast, vast, vast majority of Pokemon V. Although to be fair, you are also going to have the poison damage coming in as well here, which is kind of funky. And you're basically just destroying Pokemon V. But there are two gigantic caveats. Caveat number one, they've got to be poisoned. Caveat number two, you need the free energy. Well, being poisoned isn't the end of the world. Garboda exists. And Garboda's got the ability that just if there is a stadium in play, and there's almost always a stadium in play, you can just poison your opponent's active Pokemon. So that's fine. Play Garboda. The issue here, uh, the bigger issue, is the free energy. Yeah, sure, you're an evolved non-GX, non-V Pokemon. So you can use twin energy, and if that runs out, you can use triple acceleration. It falls off at the end of your turns. So it's clearly a backup plan. But what about the third energy? If you're an expanded, you've got Dark Patch. Yay! But we're not an expanded most of the time. So, yeah. You can, you can play like Turbo Patch when you're still a basic. But, really? I'm just not seeing enough here. I'm not seeing enough ways to get the energy on here. We do incidentally have that High Dragon, which allows you to attach as much Darkness energy during your turn as you like. But does that mean we're playing High Dragon as a Stage 2? And we're playing Scolopede as a Stage 2? And we're playing... 
Garboda, and maybe we're playing Toxicroak as well. Like, there's a limit, ladies and gentlemen. There's a limit. And that's kind of how I feel about Scolopede. I like the card. I think 220 for free energy is great. But it's an awkward to use free energy. And you're a stage two. And you really need minimum one stage one. And I worry it's another one of these cards that my first impression is, hey, that could work. And then I sit down and think about it and I'm like, seems like they're asking a lot. So let's go ahead and give it three Wossies. I love the number. I think the amount of damage you're doing is perfect. I want this to be good and I'm on a real Gen 5 high right now. But free energy and it's a stage 2 and it needs stage 1 support Pokemon. I think there might be better options for single prize Pokemon to KO Pokemon Vs. And I'm sorry. But hey, I'd love to know what you think. So, you know, let me know in the comment section, would you? Go nuts! Be nice. And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wasi, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash PTCG Radio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus podcasts and all that good stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, where you can do exactly that. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching. PTCG Radio.